Uh, makeup, makeup. I think my nose looks a bit glossy. Have you said? Um, have you Not said? So loud. You don't shout. Have we started? Yes. Well, you haven't said action. Hmm? Action. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. As promised, we said we would do, after the last gourmet mm -hmm. dinner video, we said we would do a cook your own gourmet dinner on a budget. And here we are today doing it with my glamorous assistant, Mr. Matthews here. Good afternoon. So we are, we've been shopping, we've got a menu, so we're gonna talk you through the menu and then I'm gonna show you what we've bought and what it cost. And yeah, let's start by going through the menu then that we're doing. Okay, possible hors d'oeuvres, TBC. Well, that's not very definite, is it? No, it's not, it's to be confirmed. Oh, right, we haven't done that bit yet. <laughs> <laughs> right, and then? Leek velouté. That's posh for leek soup. I expect you know that anyway. I don't know why I felt the need to clarify that. With crispy leeks and parmesan crisp. Followed by miso marinated salmon with no miso. Actually, yeah, with no miso. But watch the video <laughs> later. If you'll, marinated you'll, salmon. You'll get the gist. Yeah. Um, with some crispy vegetables. I thought they were pickled vegetables. Oh, crispy pickled vegetables. Yes, crispy they're both pickled, vegetables. pickled and crispy. Ooh, there we are. Um, and then the main course is chicken roulade, stuffed with. Red peppers and asparagus mm -hmm. served with rosemary roasted miniature potatoes and cavolo nero. With a mustard sauce. With a mustard sauce. And the dessert is panna cotta with raspberry coulee. And not only is this, you could cook, that we're only cooking for two of us because obviously lockdown, we can't have any friends around to join us. But we have bought enough within our 20 pound budget that you could do this for four people. And that includes? A bottle of wine. It does. 20 pound includes a bottle of wine as well. Not an expensive bottle of wine. No, if it cost no. say 25 pounds, <laughs> there wouldn't have been a lot left for the food, would there? Really? No? But hey, you okay, you'd have a 25 <laughs> pound bottle of wine. wine. Yeah. Yes. Um, we've also assumed for the purposes of this that you, anybody wanting to do this would have Things like sugar, milk, soy sauce, mustard, sort of what I would call store cupboard staples type of things. And we also will give you, when we do, as we do go through the cooking, we'll give you alternatives for what we're using. For example, when we're using, I don't know, what, I'm trying to think of something here. Okay, right. Rather than using sake and miso spices and a selection of ancient Japanese herbs as specified in the original recipe for the <laughs> uh, marinated salmon. We've picked out things that we actually had like soy sauce, sugar and I can't remember what else. Oh, some sherry. We haven't got sherry, we put Madeira Yeah, we didn't have any sherry. sherry. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's all about, there's nothing no, that you can't substitute. We're trying to give you substitutions as we go through it. So and it, we can, and if we don't, just go on to Google and say, yeah. substitute for this. There's about yeah. 10 things come up. Google's actually really good for that. What was it recently that I looked up to substitute? Was it Thai fish sauce or something? And I looked up and it said, do lemon juice and what, some, I was doing some sort of Far Eastern cooking, I think. I, I, I don't know. No, I, I typed didn't... into Google only yesterday, substitute for uh, Caroline Matthews, and uh, Brooke <laughs> Shields and Jennifer Aniston came up. <laughs> I don't think they did, did they? Can I Let's tell them? Know. Yes, well, it doesn't matter. If we... <laughs> We're filming this after we've done the shopping and the cooking, and Caroline's going to put it at the beginning. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's a normal thing to do when you film things. You don't always that, film the intro first. Do, do they do that in movies? Do they like... Do, yeah, they don't actually do it scene by scene from the beginning to the end. Shocker, I know. Well, they did in that one we watched recently. 
Which one? About the First World War. It was shot as like one or several massive scenes, wasn't it? Really Which good film? movie that we watched recently. Was it You'll good? have to be a bit more specific than that. The well, the troops. No, the troops running across the battlefield to get the message to the guy in the troops about. Oh the yes, that was good, wasn't it? No idea what it was called. Was it called? Nineteen. Nineteen seventeen. Yeah, nineteen seventeen. Yes. Good yeah. film. See. Yeah. Film, film recommendations as well as gourmet dinner. We're going to get a different director for the next uh, cooking <laughs> right. who actually does it all as one shot live. Let's shut up. Let's go and see what we bought and how we cooked it. Right, we've been shopping. We went to Aldi and Tesco's. The Aldi was thirty or Aldi was thirteen pound fifty three, and Tesco's was six pound thirty. However, you have to take one pound. Sorry, Ashley's sorry. running the tap in the background. Told him not to. Um, you have to take £1.25 off this because that was my Marmite rice cakes which aren't included. So that comes to a total of £18.58. Plus we've got a couple of items that I'll show you at the end but I'll show you what we bought first. So a whole chicken which was £3.89. A red pepper which was, sorry I'm looking on, the 42 pence. Two big things of double cream which were 85 pence each. The asparagus was 99 pence. The frozen raspberries were £1.39. The miniature potatoes were 65p. The lemon was 30p. The white um, French bread baton was 50p. The cavolo nero, love this cavolo nero, was £1.25. And then the salmon fillets were £3. And then we didn't actually buy these, we had these already in the fridge. I reckon carrots are about 10 or 15p each and leeks are, I don't know, that would probably be 70p's worth. So let's call it a pound for the carrots and the leeks. And also we have gelatin, which we need about a quarter of this amount, which is, I think this packet was pound twenty. I bought it a while ago, so I can't remember. I think it was pound twenty. So well, let's call that 50p. So that takes us up to, that's almost exactly 20 pounds. Apart from, Ashley managed to get a bottle of wine as well included in the 20 pounds and this was £4.49. So that is what we're starting with. Just under the 20 pounds there or just about on the 20 pounds. Are you ready to cook, Mr. Matthews? I thought you were cooking. <laughs> So I've just checked the sauce recipe for our starter, which is based on a um, traditional Japanese marinated black cock dish, and you're supposed to marinate it for three days, so I'm uh, two days late already. <laughs> um, we don't have any of the ingredients that they required. They wanted sake and mirim and ancient Japanese spice mixes, <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to come up with our own um, using things that we've got. Right, so we're having two spoonfuls of dark muscovado sugar. Any sugar will do, you could use normal granulated, I just chose to use that for a bit more flavour. Some soy sauce. Um, Mirin and sake are a bit like um, sherry-ish, rice wine -y things. I haven't got any sherry, but it did turn out I had some Madeira. So it's Madeira going in ours. The leftovers at the back yeah, of the cocktail cabinet. this is 1962. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was two then, yeah. Um, and then I'm just going to put a splash of vermouth for a sort of bitter herby edge. But you can basically use any booze at all, can yeah, you? I use lemon juice and um, soy sauce. It's just a spicy. So something yellow, sweet, something bitter, whatever you got. And, you could uh, even use like maple syrup if you haven't got sugar, I guess, or syrup or something like that, maybe. Yeah, syrup and the wine would probably do. Yeah, right. and something salty for you could use fish sauce, couldn't you, instead of I soy sauce if you got sauce, that. Yeah. So anyway, anything with a bit of colour and a bit of flavour. And I expect that will work. Right, okay. Are you going to seal that then? I'm going to stick it in there and leave it for three days. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this is the chicken. And what are we doing to the chicken? What we're doing to the chicken is we are going to um, basically portion it 
and yeah, take the legs off. Take the legs off and the thighs. Vegetarians look away now. Yeah, vegetarians, absolutely. And what have you got in here? Right, that is going to be the basis of the leek velouté starter and also um, an additional soup for dinner on probably Tuesday night. Oh, okay. That's a free extra. <laughs> uh, okay, so. But just to say, you make this is obviously stock with, yeah. that we're making in here with the chicken bones. You don't have to put the veg in, can you? You can quite easily make it just with the chicken bones. Well, you could, but I took the tops off the leaves. Yeah. I had a spare carrot. I threw that in and an onion. Yeah, had, but you don't have to. No, you don't have to. Yeah. If you had some celery, that oh. would be fabulous. Um, I'm removing the skin from the chicken because, again, that's going to be one of the extra little bits that we are uh, going to be serving with the main course. We're doing crispy chicken skin. I thought I would mention chopping boards at this point. I'm not a chef. I don't have a hundred different coloured chopping boards for different things, but I am aware of basic food hygiene. If you see me using the same chopping board, Assume it's been things. washed. Assume it's been washed and sanitised in the, in the meantime. So what part of the chicken are we going to use for, we're just using the breasts for we this main course, yeah? We're basically using the breasts for the main course. There's two good sized breasts on here. So yeah. the legs we can use for the soup on Tuesday yeah. for dinner. Absolutely. Chicken and vegetable so, soup. Uh, we've taken I don't know why you've decided Tuesday. <laughs> it's a very arbitrary decision. It could be any day, couldn't it? It could, but I thought that we probably wouldn't want chicken again. Yeah, day after day. No. So there's my skin, I'll come back to that later. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do this roughly. There's another, there's another extra that we're getting out of this as well. I would pick all this off and use it, but in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, give it to the cat after I've uh, cooked it in the... Uh, <laughs> the, cat the, <laughs> the cat will be pleased. Yeah. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, as the cat says. Three chicken dinners, yes. Yes. <laughs> so, um, to make a stock, can't get That's the carcass and the wings in there, yeah. yeah, with the veg, but as we said, we don't have to use the veg if you don't want to. And how long do you cook it for? I would say, it would have to longer the better almost to get the uh, yeah. flavour up, but a couple of hours on a slow simmer, I would think. And then you're going to reduce it down or? Uh, depends how much I get and where it is. Oh, again. okay. We'll come back in a couple of hours then. A uh, bit of an update. Here's my chicken skin. Mm -hmm. I've scraped any bits of fat off it. Um, I've made chicken skin once before it wasn't very successful. I'm hoping this time will be better. I'm starting doing sort of bar bar uh, varnish, garnish. <laughs> stroke, uh, it's going to be a very shiny starter. Yeah. Uh, the garnish for the starter, which is going to be pickled vegetables. I've cut some carrots up into some very nice little squares and I've come up with this idea, which I've never done before, but it's a bit experimental. Cablo Nero we love, but I normally only cook the leaves because the stems need to cook at obviously a different speed so I thought I would make the leaves, the stems rather, into the salad for garnishing the starter. With the carrots? Yes, with the carrots. So it's, um, that's the stems. I'm going to cut them down into pieces very similar in size to those carrots. I'm going to just very briefly blanch them and then I'm going to lightly pickle them before I serve them with the salmon. What are you going to pickle them in? Uh, probably white wine, vinegar, a bit of water, a bit of sugar, just a light pickling process. A light pickle. Not Branston then. And I've been to the garden. Uh, only herbs that we have that are available at the moment are rosemary, but it smells lovely. That's going to go with the potatoes. Cool. So we're moving on to dessert now. Um, we are cooking half quantities just because we don't want four panna cottas and obviously we can't have two guests around to have dinner with us. But the quantities that we bought will do four people, are suitable for four people. So the quantities you need to use for four people, 150 mils of full fat milk and 400 mils of cream. So, right. And you forgot the cream, didn't you? Don't forget the cream. <laughs> and for that quantity, you use two and a half leaves of gelatin. So it's three quarters of a leaf, 
for no um, one and one, one and a quarter. quarter. <laughs> one and a quarter. I was never one good at fractions. One and a quarter liters of gelatin, which you soak for five minutes in cold water, according to the instructions. So I've got 75 mils of milk, and I'm going to take that up to 275 with the cream goes in the saucepan which is there you warm it gently if you're splashing out and trying to do things really chefy you then add the contents of your fresh vanilla pot in this <laughs> instance it's um, I don't know, we're on a budget so we are using some vanilla extract that we have in the cupboard, which will be pretty much just as good. You won't get little black dots no. in it though. <laughs> I'm thinking of getting something that's a little bit You black. could use any flavouring for this yeah, to make it different. We've want. also got like um, lemon, Valencia orange, I think we've got down there, and Sicilian lemon. And in fact, it nearly was Sicilian <laughs> lemon. Is that all the... I think so, we've got another vanilla extract, okay. I'm sure we have. Well, that's about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. There we go, we'll go with that. Lovely. You also need 30 grams of sugar. 60 uh, grams in the full amount. Oh, right, 60 grams if you're doing it for four. And that just goes um, into the cream. Cast, the recipe says caster sugar, but you can use granulator. It's going to melt down anyway, so as long as it's properly dissolved, you can use it. Why am I filming the saucepan with nobody there? Because oh, I forgot the sugar. Oh, right, okay. So, um, yeah, you can use any sugar, but the recipe says caster, but any sugar will do. We're not do. using caster. We oh, we're uh, not? We're using granulator, don't yeah. we? Okay. And then how long do you cook that for? You just warm that up very gently. Yeah. And then pretty much you stir in the... Uh, the, gelatin the gelatin once it's warm. Do you let yeah. it bring it to the boil or not quite? Um, I better check the recipe. <laughs> So you don't boil it, you bring it almost up to the boil, add the gelatin, stir it until it's completely dissolved and then pour it into ramekins and put it in the fridge. That's about the size of it. Am I guessing? Yes. Yeah. Cool. You haven't said action. Action! My mustard <laughs> sauce is a complete cheat, ever so easy. I've cut a glass of white wine from the bottle of white wine that we had in the 20 odd pounds. I put some rosemary in it as well, just to give it a more sort of, I don't know. Rosemary-ish rosemary flavour. Flavor. I produced <laughs> it down to virtually nothing. Mm. You could use any dried herb, I guess, couldn't you? You could that? use a bouquet garnet, virtually any herb you've got. Yeah. Um, right, and to that, in this instance, I've got some whole grain mustard, the last of the jar. That's another jar out the cupboard. And I'm going to add to that also a nice big dollop of Dijon mustard. And I'm going to dissolve that in the small bit of wine that you've got there. If you don't wait till your wine is almost reduced, to, you know, then it is difficult to make this dissolve. So you reduce the wine down, you yeah, boil it quite, yeah, quite rapidly a lot. Yes, yeah. to reduce so, it. Well, no, you By what, about half? More than half, three well, quarters. Okay. So add your mustard and obviously you get a nice cream paste. I normally turn off the heat at this point um, because you don't really want to add cream to something that is really hot and boiling because it may split. I've moved the pan onto the work surface. That's effectively cooling the mixture. It's taking the dragging heat out of it. And then add some cream. I think we need a little bit more out of the other packet. Just... There we go. It's That's... not the healthy version, this, no? It's not the healthy <laughs> version, no. But it's the easy version, as you can see. Yum. Okay, a couple of other things that have been going on in the meantime. I've been getting the chicken skin ready to cook. That's going to be cooked in between two baking sheets, in between two trays. I've stuck this pepper in the, an oven on full. 
and roasted it and, theory, and then stuck it in a plastic bag and theory says that the, the skin will then all peel off really nicely and from the sweating in the plastic yeah, bag yeah, yeah. absolutely I and um, the intense of the flavour of the pepper which we're going to use in the chicken will be intensified and look at that it worked a treat it doesn't normally work that well <laughs> I think you're impatient usually you have to leave it in the bag for a while okay Cheese crisps, baking parchment, grated cheese. It's a mixture of maybe three quarters Parmesan and one quarter cheddar. And I'm going to stick it in the oven. Just uh, to say, this is like just a garnish, isn't it? It's absolutely yeah. not essential at all. It's no difference at uh, all. So but, but it's just, just if you've got menu, some cheese. Your leek velouté is served with a Parmesan crisp, which yes. obviously, you know, that's what you'd want to do, isn't it? Yeah, obviously, yes. Obviously. Action. I've been doing things while Caroline wasn't here and she's quite cross about that. <laughs> um, so I have passed the stock. Actually, <laughs> Carry that's, on. That's, that's, that's a Sheffy term for put it through a sieve, you know. I don't know why they don't say we've stuffed it through a sieve. But now I've got a nice uh, stock that's going to make the soup. I have taken half the packet of frozen raspberries and a large spoonful of sugar and some water boiled them up till they were mush and then i put them through the sieve and you push them through the <laughs> is sieve. that the action you push them through the sieve with a wooden yeah. spoon to and scrape the, the mush off the bottom and you end up with a raspberry sauce which we're going to serve with the um panna cotta and we're going to call it a coolie again just to be it's uh, raspberry sauce but we're going to call it a coolie yeah, that's right yeah cool. absolutely yeah. coolie the leek balloon that's leek soup in the other language. Right. Um, I'm using the white pots of the leek. You could use more of the leek if you wanted. It won't make any difference to the flavour, but I want my soup to be tail looking. I am going to use probably half of the potato as well. I'm just going to saute the leeks in butter. Then I'm going to add some of the chicken stock, boil them, then I'm going to um, Wait, are you doing the potato in butter as well? Yeah, I'm going to yeah. do this. The leek and potato in butter. Yeah, okay. And what's the purpose of the potato? It just thickens it, does thickens it? it a bit, yeah. Then I'm going to blitz it all. Then I'm going to push it through a sieve. Parmesan crisps. Um, 180 for 12 minutes. Make them perfect. Lovely. Can I eat one? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, right. right. Well, I was in two minds about whether I was going to stuff the chicken, and if I was going to stuff the chicken, <laughs> I'd have used uh, uh, this. This is great when you're doing a few, but it's a bit of a faff when you're just doing one. So I think we're going to flatten the chicken out and then stuff That's it the breast, the is the it? Breast, yeah. And you've trimmed it up and I've tied it up, it up and a little I've bit. taken the little flappy bit off it. I'm going to bash that out a bit. I'm then going to blitz the red pepper with some seasoning and that bit of the oh, chicken, chicken. Yeah. yeah and then I'm going to put that with the asparagus inside roll up the chicken in cling film spin it round into a sausage and then I'm going to steam it okay, okay so is the the red pepper has been just roasted. Any, that's roasted. been roasted what about the asparagus is that being that, cooked that's raw I'm going to do that raw I, I'm thinking I'm going to do that raw I might I think I'd be blanching that personally if it was me. Okay, right, we're going to go for halfway house on that and <laughs> stick it in the microwave for 30 seconds. <laughs> okay. Right, okay. Right, as you see, it's all experimental. We're, we're making this up as we go along pretty much. Meanwhile, the leeks and the potato are bubbling away here in chicken stock. They were sautéed to start with and um, then bubbling away with some chicken stock. Just noticed he's been doing other things while I haven't been here. This is a little bit of the, one of the leeks. Um, this is going to be made into crispy leeks for garnishing the soup and that's just um, cut obviously long ways into really thin little strips. And that one, I think we showed you that one earlier, that's the carrot and the stalks from the Cavallo Nero, which are going to go underneath the salmon. 
So that's the peppers, the roasted pepper, and the little bit of chicken, the chicken fillet. Fillet? I think that is the fillet, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and he's decided to put a piece of garlic, a garlic clove in there. It's two garlic cloves? No, I'm going to put a garlic clove back on. Oh. Just one, good. one garlic. Do you blend this to so it's completely smooth, or can you do it with a bit of texture in it, or what would you recommend? I'm going to do it to nearly smooth, but with a little bit of texture in it. <laughs> I'm not make Hedging it. your bets, I yeah. think that's cool. Uh, honest about how this is going it's a disaster most of Matthew's words got by um, we are going to deconstruct it and bash the chip basically the chicken isn't big enough to go around the filling so we're going to deconstruct this um, take it all apart flatten the chicken a bit more and start again and this will only be in the outtake section <laughs> right, right we've we redone it <laughs> a bit more make it slightly larger used slightly less filling and now I've got something that looks like a chicken roulade. Yes. I'm quite pleased with that. That looks good. That's what the leeks look like. They took about a minute and a half. We're just draining them on some kitchen roll in their pot there. It's time to eat. And I'm quite excited about this. Ashley's just made a surprise first course, which is a little amuse bouche of crispy chicken skin with garlic and piri piri butter. So you cook the chicken skin. The we talked about that earlier, didn't we? How you did the chicken, you want to talk skin? To the chicken skin? Well, we showed it as far as you had it on yes, the board I and then you cooked it in between, between two baking, two baking trays. sheets, in between two baking trays at about 180. It took twice as long as they said to make it oh, okay. crispy, which was about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't even that crispy at that point. So I used my secret trick. Microwave? You microwave it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and that seemed to work for both the chicken and the leeks to make them crispy. We haven't got as far as the leeks yet. No, shh, don't mention the leeks. I mentioned them once, but I think I got away <laughs> with it. So what's it? This is but just normal butter with? With crushed garlic in it and some um, Nando's Piri Piri. Chicken yum, yum. Piri Piri, you know? Yum, yum, yum. And starter is served. This is the leek veluto. Yes. Which with... we made earlier with Parmesan crisp. And crispy leeks. And crispy leeks. Mm. Yummy. <laughs> We're just discussing whether we should mark the courses out of ten or five. five. Mm. We marked it out of five last time, I can't remember. I can't remember. Yeah. Either. But it's a bit difficult when you've made it yourself mm. to mark mm. it. But mm. that was really nice. To be honest, the soup would have been absolutely fine just by itself. It was a really tasty, nice mm. soup, but the other bits sort of made it more yeah, chefy didn't yeah. it yeah. yeah the cheese the parmesan crisp was really good so that's definitely <laughs> worth trying but really simple soup to make and very tasty as well and also <laughs> the 449 uh, wine from Aldi from uh, yeah very it's acceptable not bad at all is yeah, it it's very acceptable. Fine. I needed some for the you know, sauces and things so, yeah. but it's very acceptable yeah can you just say at this point your little vegetables that are going on the next course you didn't talk about what you pickled them in well, have, I about, have i talked about the soup we've done the soup we've done everything about the soup we've done the soup we've eaten yeah, the soup okay. so the next so what i did was i cut up some carrot we, yeah, and we did all that. Stems, we cut yeah, up the stems, yeah, the stems. The stems of the cabonero. I microwaved them with a little bit of water for a very brief time, maybe 30 seconds, just mm -hmm. to give them, keep them crisp. Um, drained them, and then I put them with maybe, I don't know, something like two dessert spoons of white wine vinegar and a splash of sesame oil. 
just right. because I fancy Tisman, but you could put them with... You could just do the white wine vinegar, white wine couldn't vinegar, you? Yeah, yeah, they, it, it's just a, it's just a sort of soft... Juice, yeah, yeah, lemon, lemon juice, juice would work. Too, lemon, it's just to soften them up and make them a little bit tasty. Yeah. Um, also, just to say at this point, I'm guessing this is the chicken in here. Yeah, I'm steaming it. In the steamer. Obviously, if you don't have a steamer, you can poach it in um, yeah, a pan, a pan in with water. Above the water and just, yeah. just float it in the water. And you, mm, I think you'd be better off putting something in the pan to raise it up above the water or just have a little bit of water oh, okay. in the pan. But, and how so, long is this going to take? About 45 minutes, I think. Four. And how are you going to cook the salmon? Salmon is going to go into a very hot pan yeah. and be seared both sides. Mm -hmm. Taking about three minutes. Three minutes each side. No, no, three minutes each side. Oh, okay, side, yeah. Right. And then it's going to go in the oven for five minutes on that one seventy fan, one sixty one seventy fan. Mm -hmm. We've also already got the potatoes in. Uh, they are in I, the oven here. I chose about five each of equally sized ones. Put them in there with a bit of olive oil near the end. They'll probably take thirty minutes something like that, 40 minutes. Near the end, I will chop up some of the rosemary that I got from the garden, whack that yeah. in with them, and some salt and pepper. Lovely. Here's the salmon. What's the sauce? There's a reduction of the marinade. Oh, right, so you just pop the marinade into a saucepan yeah, and, and yeah. yeah, looks delicious. And the main course is served. I don't know where all the red pepper stuffing went to. It felt like there was loads no, no, in there. there was, we but lost it, a lot because of the disaster. Right? Yeah, um, no, no. it looks really good though. I love the way the asparagus has gone through it, and the sauce looks delicious. You pleased with it, or? Well, I think it's going to be okay. I think. I think it's going to taste again, nice. Would be he always says that. I think it's going to be delicious. Well, I'm voting on that one. It's 10 out of 10 for me. I thought that was delicious. I, I can't give it, I, well, I can't really vote, but it was really, really nice. Uh, but it, the execution was, to me, was not 10 out of 10. I could do better next time. The chicken was the, so the, nice the, cooked the that way. I think chicken coated in that sort of steamed way is lovely, isn't it? Because it retains all its moisture. And it's time for dessert. And look at how nice that looks. I have to say the panna cotta is a tiny bit melty, but overall it looks delicious. But look at the wobble. Look, look at the wobble. Oh, it's wobbling oh. well. <laughs> that was how good my pudding was. And Ashley's pudding. There's really delicious. One. I might eat that in a minute. <laughs> Going back to numbers and money and what have you, you were saying earlier that you thought you could. Move. Shall I come and sit with you so we can? Well, you can do, if you do want. it. And, well, we can do yeah. it where we can both. I, you were saying that for thirty pounds, you reckon you can do? I could do six people and two bottles of wine for thirty pounds on that menu. On that type menu, thing, or, yeah. yeah. And there's that menu has left quite a lot of stuff over. There's a really nice chicken and vegetable soup with the uh, to be made yeah and, and lots of veg and things left over which if you're doing for six it wouldn't be quite the same yeah. but that would be great value yeah, five quid per person for six people yeah um and if i did it again i could tweak it i uh yeah but but, but he was also just saying that um it's quite a, it's quite labor intensive it's been most of the day hasn't it on, on yes, and off but we were um, winging it and making it out yeah. another time i could refine it and make it easier but mm. i think what i'd like to do i'm thinking that maybe with a slightly bigger budget i could do easy. dinner party that looked quite chefy and restauranty but was easier yeah absolutely. yeah this one was fiddly more no. so there's lots um, of elements so if you're interested in seeing that i mean obviously we won't do it if you're not interested but if you want to see more of mr matthew's cooks <laughs> and i help and add some interesting commentary um let us know because yeah 
And I'm not yeah. sure if we give them a, if anyone wants to cook this. If, if yeah, I, if, if if there's anything that we haven't said about what we cooked today, because it's been very sort of ad hoc, the filming and what have you, oh, please do ask in the comments, and we'd be more than happy and I'll to detail answer the recipes questions a bit more. Yeah, because they will. Yeah, if you want to know, but yeah, it was all a bit. It was hit and miss because it wasn't actual recipes. It was very much. Yeah, and it wasn't yeah. really about the recipe. It was about whether we could produce a decent de food for that amount of money. money. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think we quite enjoyed it. It gave us something to do. To mm -hmm. be honest, on a rainy lockdown Saturday, didn't it? I can't. I can't judge because it's my own cooking. But yes, you can. You can no, I can't. I can't. Get, I can't. Get, I give you. Yes, favorite. I can give you favourites, but I won't. I'm not going to say how good they're. The main course I thought was really good, but yeah. with tweaking could be even better. The dessert was my second favourite. Then the soup. Then the fish. I've not really count. Like, the hors d'oeuvres were good as well, but um, but I didn't really like factor those yeah, in. Yeah, I would say. Exactly the same order. Yeah, I thought the, the main, main course, course was absolutely came delicious. Out was better than and of course, you, if you want to do, you don't have to do all four courses. You know, you can just do a main course and dessert. You know, that was. Yeah, well, you could do, yeah. but I mean, I think what this really, or the interesting thing is, how much you can do with a three pound eighty nine chicken. You know, if you start, a, you know, <laughs> things you, I can do with a chicken. Things can I can do video. with a chicken. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Say goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> see you soon. Bye.